What's up, this is Team Rocket, and this is the Ultimate Poke MMO Region Lock Guide. I've been getting dozens of Region Lock related questions lately, so I decided to make an ultimate guide on how the Poke MMO Region Lock works. I'm going to be going over what a Region Lock is, the challenges it entails, and even the little details that haven't been mentioned publicly. My goal of this video is to create an official guide for the challenge for anyone interested in it. Whether you want to make your own Region Lock account, or you just want to know how mine works, this video will explain it all. Let's start with what a Region Lock is. The region lock in Poke MMO is a self-imposed challenge that extremely alters the traditional gameplay loop of Poke MMO. This entails creating a fresh account in a region of your choice, the catch being once you select that region, you cannot leave it until all the challenges are completed. I'll go over what those challenges are in a minute, but stick with me here. Once the goal is completed, you would then select a new region to pursue the lock-in again with the ultimate goal of completing a lock in every region successfully. There's another catch though, once you move to a new region, you cannot go back. Meaning, if I left Kanto to do a lock in Sinnoh, I wouldn't be able to travel back to Kanto. I'd have to complete all the challenges in Sinnoh and then I could move on to a new region I haven't done a lock in, but Kanto would still be off limits. This restriction creates an extremely interesting gameplay dynamic in which you would potentially need to do a lot of prep work before leaving a region that is abundant in a particular resource. For example, if you start in Unova, you'd want to capitalize on growing your own Lepas before leaving the region for good. And now, as promised, let's move on to the challenges. The first challenge is to complete the storyline. This includes any additional missions you can do like the Team Rocket stuff after Kanto. The second challenge is to complete the Pokédex. This includes all legendaries in that region with the exception of Shaman simply because Shaman is acquired in all regions once a year. The third challenge is to get 1000 hours. This means the perfect region lock run would take a bare minimum of 5000 hours because you'd have to spend at least 1000 in each of the regions. The fourth challenge is to get an in-region shiny. This means it is a shiny that can be wild encountered in the region you're locked in. So, for example, if I was locked in Kanto, Pidgey would be an example of an in-region shiny because I can wild encounter it. Which leads us to the fifth challenge, the most interesting on the list. The fifth challenge is to get an outer region shiny. This means it is a shiny that cannot be wild encountered in the region you're locked in. So, for example, if I was locked in Kanto, Bidoof would be an example of an outer region shiny because I cannot wild encounter it. You're probably asking yourself, how do I catch an outer region mon without wild encountering it? Well, there's three ways. You could get them during events, from swarms, or mysterious balls. And no, I know what you're thinking, mysterious ball shinies do not count towards the challenge, they can give you caught OT and that's it. If you pull a shiny, it wouldn't count towards the challenge. Once you catch the mon and get the caught OT, you can then effectively egg it, making the challenge more realistic. This fifth challenge is extremely compelling because when you first start a region lock account, you are completely unable to complete this challenge efficiently. You start with no caught OT on any outer region mon. You're forced to hunt specific swarms to unlock more mon that you can egg hunt. Additionally, it offers a completely altered gameplay loop. For example, if you were locked in Kanto, you'd be psyched to get a spoink swarm because you unlock a whole new egg hunt, and that that Spoink Swarm would offer 4 rolls at an outer region shiny. I mean, what other account other than a region lock account is out here egging Spoinks and getting hyped for these niche swarms? Moving on, let's talk about the little details I haven't brought up yet. To start, once a region lock account completes its first region, they would then have to use the two shinies they acquired in that region in the next region storyline. These shinies cannot be bred or altered. Their wild caught IVs and nature is what must be used in the next story. If there is a level cap which prevents their use, you must wait until you reach the cap to use that slot in your party. Those two party slots they take up would be unusable until the level unlock is achieved, at which only the shinies can be used in those slots until the storyline is completed. This not only makes the storylines more challenging, but this rule also has a huge influence on what shinies a region lock account would desire. Having a skill like Cloyster would go a lot farther in the E4 than a Bibarel if you catch my drift. Next, I'd like to discuss other restrictions. A regular region lock account is allowed to trade other players, use the GTL, all that good stuff. The only thing they cannot take is physical donations like money or Pokemon. They can take charms, donator status, and unique lores like premium and legendary lores. The standard lores cannot be donated as those are an expense the player must incur themselves to do the challenge daily. The special lores are so rarely used they're fine as donations here and there. The last niche detail I have not brought up is the mon that can be wild encountered but aren't listed in the region's decks. A good example of this is Pineco. You can wild encounter Pineco in Altering Cave in Kanto but it isn't listed in the Kanto decks. This is a technicality and does not count towards the outer region shiny goal if locked in Kanto. The rule of thumb is if it can be wild encountered, it's an in-region shiny. That's everything on the Pokemon region lock challenge. Before we go, I would like to talk about the other variations of this challenge. There is one other variation that I've created called the Hardcore Pokemon Region Lock Challenge. The account I'm actively making episodes on is a regular Pokemon Region Lock Challenge account. However, I've come up with a more hardcore Iron Man-like variation of the region lock. The Hardcore Pokemon Region Lock Challenge is the exact same as the regular one. The only caveat being you cannot trade players, you cannot pop charms, you cannot use Donator, and most importantly, you cannot use the GTL. 
everything you acquire on the account would have to be earned yourself with no outside influence. I want to be the first person in the world to complete the Pokemon region lock challenge, but I challenge anyone brave enough to take on the hardcore variation. I'd love to see the unique type of gameplay and strategies that end up being used. I've already had a handful of people tell me they started their own region lock challenges, so I figured I'd offer a roadmap on every detail regarding the challenge so there's a point of reference to go off of. I hope you enjoyed this guide. If you found it helpful or interesting, please consider leaving a like. This has been Team Rocket. Smell you later.